Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, you can support, share, and subscribe. Subscribe wherever it is that you are listening to this, whichever device you may have in front of you. You may also share the very words of God that you hear or the link to wherever you found this. And in addition, you can support by subscribing to the newsletter, aksum.substack.com, or heading over to patreon.com slash T-E-W-A-H-I-D-O. We are in the scroll of the apocalypse, the scroll of uncovering, the scroll of revelation, whichever translation you like better. Chapter 16, and of course, reading from that lovely KJV. Let's start with verses 1 to 7. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous, are thy judgments. And so, as we saw earlier in the scroll of Apocalypse, we see that God is not the God of one age, but of every age, of the ages of ages, of the age to come, of the past, of the present, of the future. And so he's the God of all that is space and all that is time, the entirety of the cosmos, the entirety of the universe. And it is this God who chooses to represent his life-giving word through a voice. And should you heed it, good on you. Should you not, that voice will be pronouncing judgments against you. And those judgments are not wrong. They are not an error but they are according to the correct path that was laid before you and that you should have followed. Verses 8 to 11. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And so we see here that each and every single one of the people in this story and in this narrative and each and every single one of us both speaker me and hearer you are offered a second chance are offered another opportunity are offered repentance that is that sorrowfulness that sorriness about what we have done wrong to stray from that correct path and to do a 180 degree turn to face our Lord and walk toward him before our time is up, before our last breath, before it's too late. Because once it's too late, then there is judgment and judgment alone. Verses 12 to 16. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, 
and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And so we saw the same way that the chapter begins with the voice of God, uh, that which comes forth, springs forth, is produced by the mouth of God, is the good teaching. That which comes out of these frog-like demons and demoniacs and spirits that are evil and demons is the teaching of the false prophet or the false teacher, the false preacher, the Antichrist. And God will do great battle on that day, and that is, of course, the judgment. And when that day will come is not for us to know. He will come like a thief in the night. That is to say, he's not going to send us a text message or a call or a 30-minute reminder or a five-minute reminder on our email calendars. We need to keep watch like the night watchman of any great Middle Earth or fairy tale type movie or book. And we need to have perfect garments, the garments of mercy, the garments of grace, the garments of shalom, which is wholeness and peace. And these things, this coming like a thief in the night, this keeping of the watch, and these garments remind you of the gospel of Matthew, very much so. And I would encourage you all to stop seeing these things as coinkading. It is no coincidence. It is providence, and that is because the scroll of Matthew and the scroll of the apocalypse are one with one another. Finally, we have this great word that is so seeped into the popular imaginations of the American people because of, again, the world of cinema. Armageddon. Well, the har means mountain, and the Magedon is some sort of place whether it is literal or eschatological, given all the judgment we're talking about, I'll leave to you. But those who are Ethiopian and the not audience will recognize the word har as it's in the word Amhara, one of the largest ethnic groups of Ethiopia. And we see Am is people in Hebrew. And of course, Har is mountain. And we find that these people are indeed highlanders or mountain men or mountain people. I also think that it's good for us to reflect in this moment, why would there be a random Hebrew word in the Greek New Testament? Well, there's nothing random. There are no coincidences. As we said, it is providence. And so just know that it is the site where God will conquer all of the false teachers and he alone will stand as the sole teacher of teachers. Verses 17 to the end. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Again, look how in verses 
12 to 16, we're talking about Armageddon, which has the Hebrew word har and mountain here. And then here in 17, the end, we, we see that mountains were not found. So the mountain of God replaces those people who think of themselves as mountains. Mountains are where people's loftiness, people's arrogance, people's worship of false gods would often happen. Babylon is Babylon, but Babylon is also Rome and it's also functional because it could be Ethiopia or the United States for that matter. These islands and mountains are hideaways. They're places where humankind, where the son of the groundling likes to boast, but they will not be able to boast. They will not be able to hide when judgment comes. They will be exposed to that judgment. And in that day, the time for repentance will be over. Instead, it will be time for awe of God, to whom be the glory unto ages of ages. Amen.